Hello, um, welcome back. This is part 10 of the uh, Corvette build, the uh, Ravel Matchbox upgrade. And uh, another week's gone by and I've been doing lots and lots of little tiny detail jobs. Uh, I've done some work to the hull, which you'll see in a, in a moment. Um, but this uh, shot here you can see is basically the all the lockers for the deck there's various different lockers that most of these are kit parts um and they um the only real detail that's added is these um tiny etched parts i'll sort of focus a little bit better there um which are like the i suppose they're kind of like a a clasp come hinge that attaches to the um the edge of the edge of the doors so um lots and lots of clean up on those because they're t tiny parts and um obviously you cut them from the fret and then you've got to trim off the little stub that's left and they do give you spurs and it's just as well because i've lost half a dozen of them on the floor and um you know so um but the, the, there's more than enough to do all these uh, various lockers uh this one here i added a, a little d handle to the uh to the door this one has got some handles that are made from other parts there's no sort of parts supplied for this so i just found some scrap parts on the uh the fret which don't seem to be used for anything else and i've, I've fashioned some handles for that um the only issue with these really is that the the parts supplied in the kit, um, the fit of them isn't very good at all. They're mostly made from two halves with visible seam lines and then the tops go on and the tops are mostly too big for the, uh, the actual um, unit and then you have to sand them down. So what I found it easier to do was basically just cement these together, leave them for a day so they were nice and um, cured and then sand sand them flat on a piece of um, wet and dry there's a piece um, there that you can see that these have been sanded on and uh, literally just turn them over and over sanding them until I got them flat being careful obviously not to sand off the detail on the on the front uh, of each of these um, but the backs of them are smooth and um, they look, they look quite decent now, but um, quite a lot of work involved in, in, in tidying those up. There's still a couple that need uh, a couple of details added to them. Um, and um, there's also some um, sort of ventilator units. Let's just clear those out of the way there. And uh, you can see these. These are um, for the upper deck. And these are basically just the styrene parts. Uh, they're just like a box section. And again, these were sanded up and then they have this etched brass um, detail, like a vent added to the front. This part's got a very, very tiny gutter along the bottom edge that you have to bend up. And um, so that was soldered into place and then uh, the rest of it, um, the rest of it glued on. Um, and most of them are made out of two pieces, this sort of like layers of, of etch to give like a, a 3D effect to the to the mesh. So obviously the, the mesh will be painted black and then picked out, dry brushed with a bit of grey so that it looks like a, uh, an actual mesh um, sort of ventilation uh, thing. Um, a lot of time I've spent building these two things here now these and you can see how tiny they are these are the uh, the rope reels uh, for the front deck just in front of the breakwater and each one of these is made of 18 parts there's a um, central um, white metal shaft and then you attach these wheels to it but the frame which is super super delicate and quite bendy um 
that has to be built around this in order to to be able to fit those inside now the plan here i mean this took me one of them i had to completely strip apart and rebuild um because i just couldn't get it to go together right and then i had to go with the other one and um they do actually give you four of these in the kit um but um for some reason i've only got three other shafts so that seem to be missing a shaft you could replace it with a bit of um, brass tube i suppose but um they give you four because there are options to fit them elsewhere on the ship if you decide but i'm happy with the two that i've built i i, I don't think i could face building another one um there's a, there's an awful lot of work goes into them and um so the final thing to do with these obviously once they're painted is to actually feed some rope around these um and i'll come to that in a moment um but they, they you know they, they look fantastic i mean the the delicacy of the parts um but they're, they're not for the faint-hearted really i did think of replacing these crank handles with a an actual piece of wire um but i think overall by the time it's all painted up and everything's together i think that's um not going to be that noticeable that it's actually flat um etch so i'm, I'm going to stay with the parts that are on them um but the, i mean the, the the actual work that's gone into these you can see how complicated that thing is there it's just unbelievably fiddly so um thankfully no more of those um there's a few other pieces that i've put together you'll see the deck in a moment this is um this is a piece that fits on the the breakwater uh and this has been um soldered uh on and it's got like a stand for the davit that that lowers the um you know sort of has one of the uh, the boats attached to it um and there's two more of those there i think i might have shown those off before they've got to be fixed to the to the top of the uh top of the deck yet um but it's it's starting to come together and as i'm doing it the the, the parts count for the certainly for the deck detail set is going down and down um and the, there aren't that many pieces left to do um one thing i have been using uh, which you may not be familiar with is this type of file it's a riffler file now i've got a set of these various shapes and uh well not grits it's um it's got sort of uh serrations on it like a proper file um but these are designed they're smooth on the top and the abrasive part is on the bottom and you can actually use these in your finger like that to file on a flat surface but because they're not a regular file the, the rest of the file doesn't get in the way so it's really good for getting into tight corners and you can actually use them for clean i haven't actually done this one yet but you can clean up the um the brass on the face of this where you can't maybe clean it off with a bit of abrasive paper you can actually get there and just clean that flat and they're really useful they, these were only cheap I, I can't remember where i bought them but they weren't sort of top quality tools i just found a set somewhere and, and picked them up it might have even been in one of those um shops that sells all the cheap um chinese tools you know so uh but they're, they're worth getting a set um for little jobs like this i mean i've, I've had them about 10 years i've only used them about four times but you know for that one time you do need them they're very very useful so um one last thing while i'm on this uh close-up camera here is um the rope reels as as i mentioned you know the, these have been put together and they're going to need some scale rope attached to them now the only rope that comes with the kit is this roll of um yarn which it's really too fine for this and also it's it's more like a kind of glorified cotton i think it's just a, a colored cotton so i won't be using that um and what i did do instead i went online and i found this um this company called ropes of scale and um i've managed to get these scale ropes now they're in canada um but they were reasonably cheap 
um, and you know as, as far as accessories go and I ordered them at the beginning of the week and they came within a I don't know about three days from Canada I uh, didn't pay any um, duty on them and there was a bit of postage attached but you know considering you know these are going to add such a really good sort of visual um, look to the to the finished ship now, I wasn't sure what sizes to go for. They did them in black. They did them in various shades of brown. So I just went for a bit of a mixture and different gauges. I don't really understand much about shipbuilding and ropes and things like that. Um, but um, if you look at them close up, and they are actual, um, that will focus. They are actual proper ropes, you know, not just you know, pieces of cotton. Um, that's the size of that one on the back. 0.45 millimeter they call that one beige there's a um, 0.8 millimeter beige this one is one millimeter beige and then uh, there's the other one 1.3 this is more the kind of rope you'd see tying it to a dock side or something but there, there would be lengths of that lying around on the uh, on the deck so between the all the pieces you know i've got enough here i think to be able to um, do the uh, do the rigging and, and the ropes in these um, little um, reels and various other bits and bobs that are around the ship. Um, not forgetting that some of the some of the uh, what you'd think of as railings around the edge of the deck, some of those are rope as well. Some are made from brass rod because they were metal. But there are some rope ones as well that go through the stanchion. So I'll be able to use this rope for that as well. So moving on to the, um, the hull now. And um, I'll just switch uh, cameras and I'll bring this up. It's getting on the sort of unwieldy side now. Um, let me just move that camera out of the way. And uh, you can see now that um, just alter the, the light in so that it doesn't reflect as much um, if you sort of have a look at this from the the front moving forwards you can see that I've added a fair bit of detail to the front of the deck now uh, I'm still nowhere near actually painting it but um, it's getting that close to where I can put a coat of primer on it's going to need a bit of a clean first because there is some flux on the surface and there's also Quite a bit of dust on it from where I've been sanding various other bits and pieces so it's all going to need uh, washing off before um, before I can paint it but uh, the main things I've added um, starting from the front here I fixed the there's this um, I'm not sure what it's called actually it's like a big circular piece on the uh, on the on the bow um, that's made from about six pieces of um, brass etch can I get that a bit closer? You can sort of see it there with my finger there. Um, and so I had to clamp those together and solder them and then somehow solder them onto the end of here without melting the, the, the plastic below. Uh, but I managed to get it on in the end. It was quite fiddly. Some of these grey parts are actually kit parts. You can see they're sort of hooks, hook shapes. Um, again, I'll have to have a look in the uh, the book to see what, what they are. Uh, these cast metal parts have been added um, and then moving forward you can see the breakwater has been added the the, the, um, the webs on the back are, are soldered on uh, but I actually glued this to the deck I didn't want to risk getting solder all over the planking detail on this so I glued these on it's pretty solid um, these parts here which is splinter plate um, if I get that to focus a bit better. These are splinter plate. Um, these are folded up and then they're actually soldered to the edge of the edge of the deck. Um, again, you can see they you can see the rivet detail on them. It's been punched through from the other side. And then you've got this large breakwater here. Let's see if I can get that in a position where it's sort of visible. This large breakwater sits in front of the wheelhouse and uh, that's soldered to the deck. 
I did add a very small strip of styrene to the front. You can just see my finger there where the strip is. There was just a tiny gap showing and I, I was figuring out how to fill it and then I thought, oh no, I'll just put a piece along the bottom. I'm sure when these were built, um, they probably had some kind of weld or something along there. So um, I've just added that. I think once it's painted, you're not even going to notice it's there. You can see the solder on the back um which is here and the solder along the back most of this is hidden by those lockers that uh, get glued onto the deck so they're going to be dropped into place and 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 any any minor imperfections there in that solder joint that's going to hide that and then moving along to the to the rear uh, i've added those additional plate parts there with the sort of planking detail on that sit over the top of the existing deck, which was glued on previously. So awful lot of work in, in this, getting all these pieces on and folding metal and, and that kind of thing. As I say, I've used up most of the parts now that are in the, um, the deck kit. Um, looking at the instructions here, you can see that, um, I've been um, gradually just put the light back on better maybe not um, so I've been marking stuff off as I go because it is really really complex there's still some parts for the davits there's all these little cast metal ventilators uh, which I'm not going to add until I've painted the deck and then I'll paint those up separately and then glue them on um, I've started work on these um, the skylights, which uh, and there's a hatch there, which again they're, they're going to get fixed on after the deck's been painted. Um, there's also detail for the back here, which I've I've got to do. Um, so the idea of getting some of the painting done initially that's sort of gone on the back burner a little bit because I'm I'm thinking I might be better working my way through all these detail parts first and then applying paint um, and I still have to keep constantly checking through these instructions to make sure that uh, I've done various bits as I've gone along um, so um, but it does seem to be getting there now my next job is going to be um, this which is building these stairways which are made out of these sort of brass etched um look at that behind my hand these brass etched strings and treads and they've all got to be soldered together because glue just won't manage that really so they've got to be done next um i've also got to clean up all these um vents uh, this is the only one i've done so far I've, I've sort of sanded it up and these are the kit parts and these have got to have these rings attached to the front and this detail goes around the middle um and there's quite a few of those to do and it's really just a case of plodding on and working my way through it and um hopefully um you know it'll uh, it'll start to resemble the ship at some point um it's strange that i've been on this for a while now and you forget things that you you have done things like the funnel assembly and i did the uh, the front deck uh with the with the gun that's been put away out of the way so it doesn't get damaged while i'm, I'm working on everything else um and i may just jump onto something else i've got i've got a day on it tomorrow so i may just um, do something completely different, like the lifeboats or something, you know, just to to break up a little bit of the monotony. I mean, I am enjoying the build, but, um, you know, when you hit something where you're doing millions of tiny little sort of hinges and things like I've been doing for these, um, it, it, it can get a bit repetitive and, and, you know, you're sort of losing the will to live, really, you know. So... Um, Anyway, I'll uh, I'll push on, and um, seem to be picking up a little bit in terms of um, 
people watching this now you know there's quite a lot of people saying well I, i've got one of these boats and i'm interested in watching what you do with it not necessarily everyone's got this huge um detail kit but there's people out there with the platinum um kit the revel kit which you know this this hopefully might help them a little bit and there's other people just seem to be enjoying you know watching somebody building the ship in the first place so um if uh, if you've not subscribed then um subscribe and you can keep up with the uh, the other um videos and don't forget there's quite a lot of other videos on my channel not necessarily to do with ships but generally uh, model making um and i think once i've sort of broken the back of this build i might start doing some additional videos of um just different techniques that i use and you know i mean there's a couple of things that i've done so far that people said oh, i've never thought of doing it in that way so um i might do some um basic uh, videos um, because you don't necessarily need a vast toolkit or loads and loads of specialist um gear to, to do this kind of thing and uh, and particularly when it comes to things like the painting and the weathering as well I'm very old school in that sense. I do I do use an airbrush, but I do an awful lot of hand painting as well, and I do a lot of hand weathering as well. Um, so you'll see those techniques coming up soon as well. So um, as ever, um, you know, please subscribe. Uh, you know, like the video if you like it. Feel free to comment. Uh, I'm happy to uh, answer any comments, and um, I'll um, hopefully see you on the next video. Okay, thanks.